Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. So today, as you can see, I'm showing off the Rook. I haven't had that much to post recently because I've been... Well, the construction on this kit is, uh, is labor-intensive, to say the least. It's all hand-cast resin from Industria Mechanica. Uh, resin with the exception, of course, of the photo etch and brass, etc. But here it is. It's been given a thorough going over with Mr. Um, Mr. Surfacer 1000 and Mr. Resin Primer Surfacer. Because I've never used these before, I thought it would be wise to go over it with the Resin Primer after the Surfacer. And as you can see, the Primer, as always, showed off some remaining little areas that needed to be cleared. So the thing about resin kits, when they're hand cast, um, there's a greater likelihood that there's going to be mold slippage. And as you can see, there's still some remnants. This is the green stuff showing through the thin layer of primer. And you just have to accept that. These kits are sort of, you know, they're limited run, which means that mine's like number 40 of run three i think so there's that shows you how few there actually are in existence in the world so they're not going to be like your big box uh injection kits that being said they are so cool these industrial mechanic of things are really really awesome if you're into you know futuristic stuff for steampunky really a lot of character stuff the industry mechanical line is something you should really check out we don't stock them this is just something that i'm really really excited about doing and so i'm doing a a build of it so moving on to the construction the thing is basically done um you should really take a look at the rook online if you haven't this is the instruction guide for it so this is what it's supposed to look like when it's all built up and so as you can see, it's missing the legs. The legs themselves are where the majority of the parts are. These are just the small uh, armor segments for the legs. They're all fixed to a piece of sheet styrene for easier priming. And so my next stage is that I'm gonna have to clip and clean all of this, plus the larger armor segments that go on the legs and then reprime them. The whole kit, the reason I only did a light sort of going over was because I'm going to reprime everything with this Vallejo uh, German Red Brown Primer. And uh, this is going to then get coated with um, hairspray so that I can sort of do some weathering on some of the forward areas. Since it's an urban fighting vehicle, it's going to, you know, be running into buildings or you know, bashing things or whatever. And the great thing about futuristic um, subjects is that you can do whatever you want with them. You can make them two-tone or, you know, you can have strange warning labels on all the areas, things like that. Uh, speaking of which, the brass handles here, this is all the wiring and stuff that you can see here, are all the, the guard rails and things like that around the you know, the missile bays, the access handles and things like that are all bent brass rod. And that was a real, this is the first time I've ever done that for a kit. On uh, the Abrams, I had, uh, I had kit parts for that, but it was, it was really, really easy. And it was a lot of fun to get these on here. Plus they're brass rod. Uh, so they're, they're really, really tough and resilient. Um, if, for sort of a more in-depth look at the, the cleaning process from the beginning, check us out on Facebook. I have a lot of pictures up there of the step-by-step -step of what it took to clean up the Rook for initial production. So some basic notes, modifications. The main gun here is going to be replaced with live resin M134 barrel assembly and the great thing about the industry mechanica kits is that they're all in 135th scale so um you know you can do straight replacement things i added some canadian jerry can assemblies here from legend these are actually pinned and fixed to the sides so that they're you know they're rigid on there they're not coming off and so this is from the legend mexis uh stowage update and it's one of their best. If you've got any modern AFV subject that you're doing, 
pick up that kit. It's from Legend, like I said, from Korea, and it's so ubiquitous. They give you such a, a fantastic variety of extra stuff, and it's all up to date. Unlike a lot of Legend stuff, which is from like 91, Gulf War kind of stuff, uh, which you can still use, but there's been a lot of evolutions in the kind of stuff that AFE is taking to combat now. So, again, I highly recommend that. Uh, got to use <laughs> a lot of sandpaper on this thing, but in the end, everything is so silky smooth. And with the surfacer on there, that roughs it up a bit. So I'm going to take it down a little bit. As you can see, I've already started working on some areas where the surfacer built up a little bit too much. But the really great thing about surfacer is that it gives you, it's like a second run of body fill. And it not only shows off the imperfections on the surface detail, but it also goes a little way to filling them in because it's so uh, dense, so thick. So yeah. So I'm just going to quickly show the legs, or one of them at least, before we end the video today. So this is the leg complete. Unfortunately, it's fully, uh, it's workable. And personally, as sort of a, what would you call it? Not uninteresting, but as a, as a, a, a modeler who prefers things to be static, uh, I'm not sure if I really dig this because it looks to me as if we could run into some, some structural weaknesses at the end product because there's only four of these. All the weight is based on these calipers here and then the whole solid resin body sits on these. So what I'm going to have to be doing is probably, well definitely pinning these into their assembly on the hull and then using a mix of 5 minute epoxy and crazy glue to fix this joint in and then we will hope for the best, hope that the weight is distributed evenly amongst these rotators that, well, basically just so it doesn't split them. And as you can see, there's some some gaps here. They sort of fit in, though, with the fact that there's cables there so that it looks a bit natural. That being said, the armor plate that I showed, it goes over this as a protective sort of shroud and it looks really really cool it's like segmented uh, medieval knight armor so it'll look really cool uh, things that I omitted on all of these hydraulic piston -y sort of looking things the industrial mechanica kit comes with an extensive array of photo etch and they want you to bend um, they look like vents around this stuff or maybe it's just sort of added protective armor but I decided to leave all those off just because on my first run, they, it, it, when I was bending them, it didn't really look the part the way that I had bent them. Not saying that you couldn't do it, it's just my experience with brass isn't really to the point that I wanted to ruin the look of the kit with having unconvincing brass on these things. Because they do look cool, as they are. So yeah, so my plan in a broad stroke is to paint the legs completely separate, then all of the armor segments as um, sort of a uh, mix between Soviet green and German field gray. That sort of look, that very drab look. Uh, I didn't really want it to be completely neutral gray. Uh, initially I thought maybe I'll paint this thing up as high caliber miniatures colors like we have on our logo. Like that all German gray with white and red markings, but I've sort of gone back on that because an, an entirely neutral or dark sea gray vehicle would look so boring <laughs> that uh, it would almost put you to sleep just to look at it. So yeah, I'm thinking about it though. I'm also thinking about putting warning like yellow and black on these access handles. Yeah. Lots to think about. This is just the very beginning of the kit. And as you can see, all these open ports here and here are actually vents that will be covered up with photo etch uh, once the whole thing is sprayed. And then I can fill that in, mask it off, and start with that. 
So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. This build is so much fun. I've been asked about if the price point on this resin kit is worth it. The Industrial Mechanica stuff, it does have a price tag attached to it, but you know, it's compared even to some of the trumpeter stuff that comes out now, it's actually on par, like when you think about it. And it's an entirely hand cast resin kit. Like the amount of work that goes into making these individual things, this thing has 124 separate resin pieces. Like when you open the box, it almost makes you pull your hair out because you think, what have I got myself into? But uh, working on it though, if you've, if you've got experience clearing you know, casting blocks and cleaning up resin, it really does come together well and it looks fantastic. This thing looks so nasty and so mean that I just cannot wait to get you know, further on with it. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. I'll put the link in the description below. We've got lots of new stuff in the works, which I'll be talking about a little bit more on Figure Friday. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.